Good day, my Railroaders. This is Southern 207 coming at you with a quick layout update. And what I've been going in the process of working on for the last few days. As you notice, things have changed over here at South End Carlson have cha started changing. Cheryl Crow, hint, major hint. Your switches will be on your heading your way shortly. But as you can see, I've installed a double cross or a single crossover here. Way it's going to work, the back track will be the main, and this track here, which is still under construction, which, in case you guys are wondering, number six, number six, with 19 inch radius curves. This eliminated one major issue I have with this. All the curve that you see is now 19 inch. And the way this is going to work, and I, hopefully within the next day or so, I have the rest of the turnouts built. But essentially, it will be knocked down to three tracks for the yard. But just as the arrival departure, inbound loads, outbound empties. The engine facility is going away because it's going to be getting moved to the far end down here when I get to it. By doing this, I've eliminated one switch here because it kicked everything back five and a half inches. When I did that, the old alignment needed some more new work. And if I could find the right paper templates right quick, you can get an idea of how things are going to work. New number six there. Your number six air, and there's the last one. Well, as you can see, I can still put in another one there to accommodate this. And in case you guys are wondering why I ended up doing this engine, this is that Conrail SD40 I picked up for 10 bucks. The worm gears on it need replaced. So what I've done for the meantime so I've removed the motor. I got the motor and original worm gears in a box. I just need to get a new set of worms or soak them deep in goo gum, which I got a can of it here. It, what I'm going to do is let them soak for a day or two. Get rid of the old gunk. Pardon the wind. It's real windy today here. But once I get that done, this engine should be operable again. But this is going to be a hard wire installation, so I might have to use a CNGP decoder. The RS3 I was able to get running. All it needed was a good lubrication on cleaning and lubing. But let's face it, all these engines from the early 90s needed, was mostly what they needed. But as of right now, that's where I'm work, currently working on putting in the new yard lead. Which, the yard lead, the plan is for it to fall, parallel the main back through the into the tunnel, but not come out the other side. It's going to stop a little shy. That way I got a nice long yard lead for switching. As well as building the local to go out in and out of this yard. Next major thing I've also been working on, and you might have noticed this, Throughout the bit earlier on the video, started putting in fascia along here. This section's been up for a while, but next section I gotta do is right there, and that's next on the list. Which also both of these crossovers will be torus controlled or powered, as well as dispatcher controlled. That way. If I want to do op, go into that mode, which I got a tap, the tablet is what that was for, because that also says JMRI, so it's going to kill two birds with one stone. I'll have JMRI out here, which for those of you who don't know, are new to my channel, please hit the like and subscribe button and ring the bell. But JMRI stands for Java Mile Railroad Interface. That's what all it means, and they 
It's a nonprofit group that may just to make the current programming easier. My situation, I had to use a PR3, which they're now up to a PR4, but until probably next couple days, depending on when Digitrax or Caesar container or ship of components for their boards, we're going to be having a Digitrax drought, guys, because of the hurricane to him way back in October. So we got that to look forward to. It's a lot. At least I know TCS has got good components, and if worse comes to worse, I can always, I got an Arduino, the only thing I'd have to buy is a motor shield, which is, is on the cheap side. And I can go DCC++, which will also allow me to use Digitrack components I currently have also. So there's that option. And now for a couple quick shout outs. As far as new view, anyone new to my channel, go check out BNSF 6951's Friday Night Live Streams, which are at 8 o'clock every Friday night. Sparky 107, 107, every Wednesday at 7. Hot Rod Rodney, he does a live stream every Thursday night at 7 also. I occasionally stream, but right now I got so much going on on my plate right now, it's not even funny as you can see. I'm in the process of doing scenery and a whole bunch of other stuff right now. Plus, I'm also working on a shed right now. Me and my, I'm helping my brother in clothes. So, I got a lot on my plate right now. <laughs> there again, if I didn't have a lot on my plate, I didn't know what to do. But hopefully in the next day or two I get back hardcore into the rock work and plaster work on this. Which I'll probably be doing another batch of, of how I do rocks here. Which as you can see I've already got the initial layer up to that point done. I still got this area to finish in once I get the facial along here. Which for those of you who are wondering... What in the world this thing is? You always see it in my videos. This is a digital voltmeter. It ties into the circuit. This way you can control, check your voltage and amperage that's coming out of your power supply. They range from around 20 bucks in the course China USA. Which... This is a 10 amp model, and the input voltage is anywhere from 5 volt all the way up, well, from 3.3 volts, which is the minimum this powers up at, up to 50 volt, which is good for our hobby. The power supply I'm using for the system is a 12 amps booster, which... I, if I ever reach 12 amps with an 8 amp booster, there's something wrong, majorly. In fact, I've got a P, uh, Digitrax PM42, which I'm going to have to do, as you guys can see, i got a little bit of a rat nest at the moment to contend with. That's next on the list to tame back again. And that's the biggest thing I stress when doing digital command. Cable management, cable management, cable management. But pretty much that's all I've been doing. It's just tight fixing loose ends. And as soon as I get some get this done and all this working, I'm gonna uh, clean the rest of the layout off and plan on doing an op session here. Hopefully within the next couple weeks. Which right now, unfortunately, because of the weather, I gotta kind of throw a monkey wrench in my plans because it's getting a little too windy. And I don't feel like getting anything damaged today. So, have a good one, model rotors. <laughs>